Grace and peace to you and welcome on this Feast of Christ the King. It is the last Sunday of the church year. Next week we begin the first Sunday of Advent and uh, kick off the holidays here at Grace. But today in our gospel reading, we actually rewind. Uh, we came to the end of the gospel of Mark and we're going back to near the beginning, the third chapter, to hear about the Jewish religious leaders and Jesus' own family coming to Jesus and asking him what kind of leader he actually is. We begin our worship today with a prelude.
the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Salvation belongs to our God. And to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord of the universe. Just and true are your ways, O Ruler of the nations. Who can fail to honor you, Lord, and sing of the glory of your name? For you alone are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and worship before you, for your just and holy works have been revealed. like a human face, 
and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the man who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who was seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. The word of the Lord. We read responsibly Psalm 95. <laughs> Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The second lesson is from Thessalonians. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us, so that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified everywhere, just as it is among you, and that we may be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, that you are doing and will go on doing the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. saying it was because he was ecstatic that he could do what he was doing. And the scribes coming down from Jerusalem, they were saying, it's because he has the easable, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And calling them to himself, Jesus speaks to them in parables. How does Satan have the power to cast out Satan? And if a kingdom may be divided against itself, that kingdom does not have the power to stand. And if a house may be divided against itself, that house has no power to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he has no power to stand, but he has his fulfillment. But 
No one has the power to enter a strong man's house and plunder his property, not unless they first bind the strong man. Then his house will be plundered. Amen, I say to you, because all sins will be forgiven of the sons of men whenever blas whatever blasphemes, blasphemies they blaspheme. But whoever blasphemes into the Holy Spirit cannot have forgiveness into the age, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For the crowd and the scribes had said, he has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What kind of leader are you? Now there's a question that that, me, that has a meaning that can change depending on how you ask it, right? I mean, if I ask you, what kind of leader are you? You'll give me a list of the qualities of leadership that you have. But if I were to change it just a bit and say to you, what kind of leader are you? Or what kind of leader are you? Then you're thinking, maybe I don't think you're a leader at all. Which is the case for how the Jewish religious leaders are approaching Jesus in the gospel lesson we just heard. They come to Jesus asking him, what kind of leader are you? Because they're convinced. Convinced that Jesus' leadership is empowered by Beezable, which translated means prince of the demons, which for those of you interested in biblical demonology may not be the same as Satan or the devil, but that's too much to get into in a sermon this morning. You have to say that for a Bible study. Let's just for now say that the Jewish religious leaders think that Jesus' leadership is empowered by an evil spirit. On the other hand, Jesus' family has a different idea. They are convinced that Jesus is empowered by another spirit. His family, whoever that may be, and that's another interesting topic to dive into. Again, too much for a sermon, but Bible study would be interesting. But for now, let's just say Jesus' family, whoever they may be, are convinced that Jesus is empowered by a crazy spirit. Not necessarily good or bad, just crazy. And then we hear Jesus' own opinion. And in the way Jesus sometimes like to do, likes to do, he just kind of comes at it sideways, kind of vaguely hints to us again that we should remember, remember way back all the way to January when we were reading from the beginning of this gospel and we heard that Jesus came into the wilderness where John the baptizer was baptizing and Jesus himself was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him. And then we're to remember that we read the whole rest of the gospel and heard about Jesus empowered by this Holy Spirit, possessed by this Holy Spirit, goes out preaching and teaching and forgiving sins and healing people, doing the good works of God. So I think if Jesus was more direct, when those Jewish religious leaders come and ask him, what kind of leader are you? Jesus would say, I am a leader who is possessed by the Holy Spirit to go out and do God's good work. Great. That's Jesus. But, you know, I began by asking you, what kind of leader are you? Would you, like Jesus, confidently say, I am a leader who is empowered and possessed by the Holy Spirit to go out and do God's good work? Maybe not just possessed. That's got a negative connotation, doesn't it? I mean, we've seen all the movies. People who are possessed, that's not good. But technically, if you've been baptized like Jesus was baptized, you've received the Holy Spirit like Jesus received the Holy Spirit, you've been possessed as Jesus has been possessed, you are empowered by God to go out and do God's good work like Jesus. Now, of course, you may say to me, but 
I'm not the leader kind of person. I'm more like a follower kind of person. Okay, that's great. Leaders need followers, otherwise, you know, it's just a bunch of leaders. Even Jesus, he had followers, lots of followers, so many he couldn't even eat bread in the story today. And St. Paul tells us over and over again in the New Testament that the Holy Spirit possesses and empowers us with different gifts, whatever is necessary for the functioning of the whole body. And St. Paul is also constantly reminding us that we need to honor and celebrate and utilize this diverse gifting that the Holy Spirit gives to the church for the sake of the building up of the community, always for the sake of the good of the community. So it's okay if you're not the leader of people kind of person. But you still got to lead your own life. You just got to lead your life of faith, especially. So, what kind of leader are you? I think it's interesting to note one of the big qualities of Jesus' leadership. And that quality that I want to highlight today, at least, is that Jesus had grit. Now, anybody heard of Angela Duckworth? Except those of you who are here at the first service, you don't have to raise your hands. <laughs> anybody else heard of Angela Duckworth? She's a, uh, a psychologist, uh, has a PhD, she teaches at the University of Pennsylvania. But she's more famous because she's written a book that's a New York Times bestseller called Grit, surprisingly. And interestingly, Dr. Duckworth began her PhD research just up the Hudson River at West Point University. She was invited to come and study new cadets as they arrive at West Point. Because as a new cadet, you go through six weeks of what they call Beast Barracks, which you can tell by the name is a really intense time. And some cadets make it through the whole six weeks of Beast Barracks, others don't. And until Dr. Duckworth came and did her research, no one could figure out why. Why do some succeed, and why do others fail? And she found that it doesn't really have anything to do with academic ability or physical fitness. What it really had to do with was how gritty the cadet was. And by that she meant how passionate and how uh, committed was this cadet to the goals that the cadet had set for themselves. Those who were intensely committed, those who hung on, were the kind of cadet that wouldn't quit just because they had messed up once. They wouldn't stay down. If they fell down, they would get up again. They were the kind of people who wouldn't give up just because it got a lot harder than they ever expected it to be, that it took a lot longer than they ever thought it would take. It was the cadets with grit that made it through the end. And I think Jesus has grit, that kind of grit. We see it today in the, in the story in the Gospel, when his family and the Jewish religious leaders come to try and convince Jesus to stop doing what you are doing. It's bad. Jesus has grit. He remains steadfast, committed to his goals. And in the Gospel, when Jesus is going around telling everyone he's going to Jerusalem to suffer, to die, and to rise again, everyone is telling him, not a good idea. Take a vacation, Jesus. Go to Tel Aviv. The beaches on the Med are fantastic. Jesus has grit. He remains steadfast, committed intensely to the goals that he has set for himself. Now, fortunately, Dr. Duckworth's research into grit showed that it's not something that you're just born with or not born with. It's something that you can develop in your life. You can practice becoming more gritty by being gritty. Kind of like faith. You can practice being faithful by being faithful, and you'll become more faithful. So we can become grittier. Dr. Duckworth also said there are basically three excuses people make 
for not being gritty about something. First excuse is people say, I can't, and then they don't. Second excuse is they say, it's just not worth it, and then they become discouraged. And the third excuse is, well, I'm just not interested in that. And then they don't devote any time, resources, or energy to that goal. You know, sometimes that's okay, because the reality of being gritty is that you cannot be gritty about everything all of the time. You cannot become an internationally famous concert pianist, a three-star Michelin chef, the winner of the Masters Tournament, and serve on the Supreme Court all at the same time. You probably can't even do that all in the same life. Being gritty involves being focused, choosing carefully what goals you're going to be committed to. And so you get to decide, are you going to be gritty about your faith life or not? Now, if you decide you want to be gritty in your faith life, then I'd suggest practicing. Practicing being intensely committed and devoted to your life of faith. You'll get better at it. I also suggest you consider how to move away from a mindset of I can't by focusing on the things that you can, even the little things of faith, small things like coming to church on Sunday, praying in the evening, maybe reading the Bible once a week or something, things you can do, small steps that build up into bigger things where you really realize, I can. And perhaps you might want to consider turning away from the things that put you in a mindset that it's just not worth it, because they're out there, plenty of them. Maybe that means turning off the cable television news. Maybe that means not reading social media where we're constantly beating one another up. Maybe it means instead seeing the gratitude in the eyes of someone who you've been a good Samaritan for. Maybe it means listening for the joy and the contentment and the happiness in the voice of someone who you've said a supportive and loving word to. Maybe it means noticing the thrill in children who are thriving, the beauty of creation that's recovering. And I might suggest that you can support your interest in a life of faithfulness by doing the things that support your interests, spending a little time, devoting a little energy, committing some resources, practicing that, growing and nurturing that interest. Your grit will develop, and you might be able to answer the question, what kind of leader are you? By saying, well, I am one possessed by the Holy Spirit who is empowered to do the good works of God. And by the way, you might want to avoid the evil spirits. They are out there. And they want to undermine your grittiness. They want to make you think you can't, that you should quit because it's not worth it, that you really don't have any interest and mostly, they just want to show you there's an easier way. But there's not.
was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the blessed. Set free by the truth of God's gracious love and forgiveness. We pray for the church, the world, those in need, our divisions, and all of God's creation. God of knowledge, guide all who teach in our schools, home, churches, seminaries, and anywhere in our lives. Especially guide our council, pastor, and leaders here at Grace as we enter a new year of worship and fellowship together. Let your light shine forth in all that we do, today and in the days to come, and that we do so in unity with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of justice, you sent your Son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Call upon leaders and judges, lawyers and advocates to proclaim your justice, especially where injustice rules. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of creation, you have provided us with a world of so much beauty and sustenance that we have abused. Bless the efforts of those who are working to restore your creation by providing clean air and water and to limit or reverse the effects of climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of compassion, look with favor on all who are in need. Fill the hungry with food. Give the poor and unemployed gainful employment. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family of Roger Sabinash. And watch over all who travel this holiday season. Be near the dying. Give courage to those who suffer oppression and want. Provide comfort and healing to the sick especially those mentioned in our announcements, those on our ongoing prayer list, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. And God of all, we ask that you hear the prayers we offer for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. It is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one
in humble submission of the love you always show to us, we bring these gifts and ourselves as our thanks. Use them and us to bear the fruit of goodness and grace, so that your glory will be known to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it for them to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood it is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for my remembrance our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Holy and generous Lord, you have set the table where we have been feasted as friends. Now, having been nurtured by your presence, in the bread and the wine, in the word and our prayers, and in the fellowship of our gathering as your people, empower us with the spirit to go out to share the goodness and hope of the gospel for the sake of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. 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 Peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.